Good evening and welcome to video 12.2. Tonight we are going to focus in on solutions and we are going to look at the idea of solubility. So when we look at solubility, we're going to start with solution equilibrium. We're going to see that word equilibrium a lot as we start going through these factors that how we can increase our solubility. Equilibrium just means that we have an equal amount of opposite things going on and they happen at the same time. When we look at solution equilibrium, to make a solution we know we have a solute that dissolves into a solvent. So when we look at equilibrium with the solution, it's when our amount dissolving is equal to the amount that recrystallizes or that comes back out of the solution. So one type of solution can be a saturated solution. In a saturated solution, it contains the maximum amount that can be dissolved. So we're talking about, of course, the solute is in the solvent. And when we get a saturated solution, we have achieved equilibrium. So we, if we added any more, it's just going to fall to the bottom and it's not going to dissolve because this equilibrium has re has been reached. We have the, um, the right amount of solute that has dissolved into it. There's no more room um, and there's this now equilibrium reach. So our amount that's going in is going to equal the amount coming out and that process is just going to kind of keep going. So our solution is saturated. There's no more room for any more solute. However, if a solution is unsaturated, it is going to contain less than the maximum amount that can be dissolved. So we don't have enough solute. There's still room to dissolve more solute. So equilibrium has not yet been reached. So we're basically still in one direction. We still have more room to dissolve. So the dissolving process is the only process that is going to be going on. And then we can also make a solution that is super saturated. In a super saturated solution, you can contain more dissolved solute than a saturated solution. Well, if we're saturated and we ha don't have any more room for any more to dissolve, we have each reached equilibrium, how do we get something super saturated where we have more than what we really seem to be able to hold? Well, the way we're going to do this is to heat to dissolve more solute. So we're going to heat up the solution. The more we heat it up, the more the molecules move around, the more will dissolve. And then we're going to cool it down slowly. So we're just going to kind of let it set and cool slowly. And when it cools, as long as it's undisturbed, we're going to get no precipitation to occur. And then it will stay this way as a supersaturated solution until it is slightly disturbed. So maybe it's a bump or you put something in, one more crystal into our solution. And thus, we disturb the equilibrium. And once it's disturbed, any extra solute that can't dissolve is going to come out of solution again until we reach our new equilibrium based on the temperature that our solution is at. So how do we know if something will actually dissolve? Well, we use the rule like dissolves like. And our like is going to be based on our polarity. So polar substances will dissolve other polar substances. Nonpolar substances will dissolve other nonpolar substances. Does this bring back memories of chapter 6 and drawing all those molecules? However, because like dissolves like, a polar substance will not dissolve a nonpolar substance. Well, you want to know why oil and water don't mix? Well, that is kind of because of this like dissolves like. Water is polar. Oil is nonpolar. So you mix water and oil, you're mixing a polar and a nonpolar, they're not going to mix. And when two liquids don't mix, 
they are considered immiscible. So as you read through, you may see that word, or as you go through some of your questions, you may see the word immiscible. Immiscible just means we will not mix. So how could we affect our rate of dissolving? Let's say you wanted to get something to dissolve faster. You don't have a lot of time. Well, one way we can do that is to increase the surface area. So how do we increase the surface area? Well, we can cut things up. We can smash them into smaller pieces. Anything that we increase the surface. So if you think about a cube and you cut the cube in half, well, now you have twice the surface area. We can agitate the solution. Agitate means to stir the solution. So basically if you have a bunch of salt and you dump it into your uh, glass of water, then if it just sits there, you've only got that so much surface and so many molecules that it's going to hit. And it's once those are dissolved, then it can hit the ones below it. It's going to take some time. However, if you start agitating and stir up the solution, you're going to move those salt particles around so you're going to have more water in contact with more salt. So agitating it, stirring it, gets more contact, basically increases your surface area. You increase how many particles you can hit, thus increasing the rate of dissolving. And then we can heat the solution. When we heat it, our solubility goes up. Again, particles are moving around much faster. As they move around faster, there's more holes, there's more particles hitting each other uh, that, that can be attracted to each other, and there's more dissolving going on. The exception to this is the gas. Gases we know are already at high speeds and moving around really quickly. So gases, as you heat them up, actually become less soluble. So gases are the exception. Basically, they are the opposite idea for gases. So as you increase heat, you decrease the solubility of gases. That's why your pop goes flat when you leave it out for too long. It heats up, and as it heats up, more of that carbonation, that carbon dioxide that's dissolved in your pop is going to come out. So how temperature does affect solubility? Again, as we just talked about, gases, we decrease solubility when we increase that temperature. And solids in general, most will increase in solubility with an increase in temperature. So gases and solids, exactly the opposite. However, not all solids will increase significantly. To a point, there's only so much that we can do to get more and more to dissolve. And let's look at pressure. We just spent a whole chapter looking at, or the beginning of a whole chapter looking at pressure. So when we Think about pressure on the dissolving process. We're going to go back to that idea of equilibrium. So this is the equilibrium on gas molecules entering and leaving a solvent. So you know there's all this gas above the solvent that we can't see. And then there's going to be gas that's within the solvent. So your gas plus the solvent, of course, is going to be our solution. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a stress. We're going to put more pressure on this solution. As we add more pressure, we will find that fewer molecules are going to be in the gas phase. So again, you're pushing down on your gas. So if you want to think of a beaker of water, and we put like a piston on the top that we can push down on this piston. Well, you move that down, and you have all these gas particles here, well, what are you going to do? You're going to push them down into here. So you're going to have fewer molecules that are in that gas phase. So you're going to increase that solubility. Mm -hmm.